guys, this is Kim with Fatty Patty Scrappers. So today I want to do a tutorial for my Soft Crafters DT project. And if you saw my video for the stuff I got the other day, um, my DT package was awesome. So I'm sorry, I'm like, my table is a hot mess. So I'm trying to improve on this by using some, um, Actually, I got this roll right here of um, postal paper from the Dollar Tree. I'm like, hey, um, I'll use that to um, kind of be my canvas of mess. So, anywho, um, so this comes in little pieces. Well, not little pieces. It's actually two um, big pieces and then three smaller ones. Or shall I say medium size, really? And it's really easy to put together. As you just saw me take it apart, um, it's really easy to put together. But before I get started with gessoing it and some other stuff, um, I am going to, well, I've already cut these two out. So I wanna show you, I am using Graphic 45's Botanical Tea Party. Could you have guessed? <laughs> Anyway, um, I really like this particular pattern. Um, I don't know the name of it, but I could find out. Um, anyway, um, this particular uh, pattern reminds me of the um, French China. So I thought, oh wow, how pretty that will be. So I went ahead and I traced around it and you will have some leftover, um, but that's okay. So basically on the bottom piece, you're gonna want to keep this flat edged as much as possible and just kind of maneuver it until you figure out where you want to um, place it. But what's going to happen is, is that even the piece that goes on the back side, which is this one, it's going to do the same thing here. It's going to overlap. So then it's not really noticeable um, that it overlaps. Now, there's a couple things you could do. You could actually take this and um, make a copy of it um, and make it a SVG file. Um, this is what I've heard somebody do. Um, I've never done it because um, I'm not uh, that coordinated to do something like that, but make a copy of it into your computer and then you can put it into your Cricut and the Cricut will cut the shape for you. So, um, like I said, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I know how to make an SVG file. I just don't know um, how to make my Cricut do that. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, um, you know, if you wanna make it less complicating on yourself, you can absolutely do that. Um, so then you're going to want to do this though. And it's gonna make me crazy because my kids, uh, seem to have um, run off with my razor blade. I know that is insane because I'm gonna have to ask them about that, but I have an X-Acto knife and either I misplaced it, which is probably more likely the case because my craft table is a hot mess. Um, I would go ahead and um, glue this down so that when I'm cutting these out in here, with my X-Acto knife um, that it doesn't move around and stuff and then I mess up my lines and stuff like that. So um, for me, I'm gonna have to go ahead and, you know, I'm gonna shade it in as much as I possibly can. Trace it, or shall we say. And, um, I'm gonna go ahead and have to cut these and I'm gonna have to do this on both sides. So you have that side and then you're gonna come back and do this side. Remember to line it up at the bottom so that the paper is not in the way. And adjust it so that there are no spaces shown. Okay, and actually the thinner the pencil you have, um, I know there are some of those mechanical pencils that this would probably be easier to do, and also to trace around the lines to have a better cut if you need to do the tracing, um, like me. 
then it'll be a lot easier for you. Then, after you cut these holes, you're gonna come in and you're gonna use your Distress Ink. Um, I think I'm gonna have to try to find, I don't think I have any Distress Ink um, that matches this color. So I'm gonna have to get a sponge and one of my um, sprays and uh, lightly go around the edges with that. It's not the same as using your Distress Inks. It will make it a lot darker and unless you're using a really light color. Um, so, and it's probably not going to be as smooth as you want it to be. So, um, but I got to do with what I got right now. So anyway, I will be back in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and um, look for a uh, matching distressing. And then we'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. So I just did a boo-boo, so I don't want y'all to do this. <laughs> okay, so on your front pieces, your front piece and your back piece, shall I say, where um, it would be the front on either side, um, you wouldn't cut this out, okay? You're just gonna leave this plain, and the only thing you're going to do is the inside, because this is where, you know, these little thingies are gonna go, okay? so. I goofed, so obviously I'm gonna to have to cover this up with flowers and tags. So um, I found a um, a uh, exacto knife, and I messed up. It's it wasn't a very good exacto knife, but that's okay because when in doubt, you can distress, you can um, sand the sides. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, and I'm gonna kind of do it. you know, away from you. Unless the paper that you have ripped is going towards you, then you'll go the opposite side where the paper is ripped so that you don't rip even more. And I'm just gonna come in here and get these off of here. going to want to like kind of do it in a downward motion and that way it will kind of fold over onto the sides which is just fine because you're going to paint over that Okay, and then I'm going to wipe all this dust off of it. And hold on, this one I'm just is gonna make me crazy. all that off as you can see I even cut my paper here <laughs> while I'm grab a drink 
Okay. So and I already cut these out. And um I'm going to glue this on. I'm gonna make sure I get it on there right. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a combination of stuff. Um, where's my little brush here? I'm gonna use my Mod Podge. Whoops, whoa. Okay, you can see I haven't used my Mod Podge in a long time. Okay. So anywho, I'm gonna use my Mod Podge and I'm just gonna do it pretty lightly. But not so light that I the paper doesn't stick because that can happen and the reason why I'm not applying it directly to the paper is it will wrinkle if you get it too saturated okay clean up those I'm gonna come here finger out there and line it up and my combination of what I'm going to use what I mean by that is I will use my scrap perfect glue on whatever does not um, set down properly So if something starts to lift, at, you know, while I'm working on this, then I'll go ahead and put that on. Like, see this right here? That's going to lift. So instead of like using a big old glob of Mod Podge and getting it all over the front, I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. See, there's another spot. I think it's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the front and make sure it's pretty even where I don't see too much hanging over, which I do see a little bit. And mostly you can kind of, um, you know, it's up to you if you want to take your razor blade and fix some of that, you can, or you can use your fussy cutting scissors if they'll work with you. I need to get some new ones. These were not that good. They were by, I think, Ion or Ionic or something like that. Anyway. Um, oops. Yuck. Okay. Probably shouldn't have put that stuff in my cap, huh? I'm going to kind of take my fussy cutting scissors along the edges here and it's not wanting to cut real good because it's wet. So I might wait and do that in a minute. But anyway, I just wanted to show you um, how far I've gotten so far. Um, at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning my edges and then um, I will paint this white with a very thin brush with my gesso and then come back over it with um, probably this kind of blue here. So um, I will do that and I will be back. Hi guys, I'm back. So, okay. I made a couple boo-boos so I'm hoping that 
I can do my best to explain it to you. Okay, so remember earlier I did this. Um, I did uh, this one in um, the lighter china pattern and I cut through it and that drove me crazy. I didn't, I'm a perfectionist, so I went ahead and I ripped those, both pieces off and um, sanded it down. And then I went and got a mechanical pencil so that I could also get closer into the lines of the um, teapot so that when I was doing my fussy cutting, that it would be a lot simpler. Then I also um, gessoed it and then painted it before I put on my, before I glued on my um, stuff. And then I, as, instead of using the Mod Podge, I went back to the Scrap Perfect because um, it works that good and there was no bubbling up and with the other one it started to bubble up too so when I saw that I was like uh you know I really wanted to make sure it was perfect so um, basically I finished um, this side and the inside and I went ahead and I started um, putting it together so um, now all I have to do oh and I finished um, fussy cutting this back piece and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the front piece and remember on the front piece I am not going to put holes in it because um, you know I don't want people to see that so this will be the front and then this is going to be the back I think it's turning out so stinking cute um, I wanted to mention too that I grabbed some of Saw Crafters um, awesome little chipboard pieces and some wooden pieces that I decided I want to use. So one of these is a little spoon and I thought that would be really cute to kind of like accent it here on the front. And then I also got this um, dress form. This is a wooden embellishment. I got these little chippies and I just used the vintage um, the vintage uh, ooh, Ranger um, Tim Holtz. Um, no, it was, I'm sorry, walnut stain. My bad. Okay, what am I thinking? Vintage just has more of a red tint to it. Then I got out two um, embellishments, Life is Good and Enjoy Life. I haven't decided um, which one I'm going to use, or I may use both. And um, then I will um, probably um, cut my flowers. So let me go ahead and put this on um, pause, and then I'll be back. Um, with the front put on and then we'll put these embellishments on together. So I'll be right back. Hi guys, I'm back. Okay, so it's all put together now. Um, let me kind of go through a little bit of what I did. Um, I went ahead and I measured um, the sides and I painted the inside and um, of course the other side and then I painted the bottom and then I came in with um, Tim Holtz antique linen and went around my edges inside and out and on the edges also here with that and now I'm gonna go ahead and start embellishing it um, and then I'll be back with the finished product I'm back okay so this is the very end of my project I think it turned out super stinking cute um, I think that this is a really um, great project to do if you want to sell these um, at your craft fair or you know you can just give it as a gift for Mother's Day that's coming up soon um, I think I mentioned that before on here and I really just love this um, when I saw it I just had to have one so I begged Saw to send me one and I also um, begged her to send me the coffee cup and I'll be doing that very soon here um, so I'm just super excited and 
really really love this project um so basically um i got these little flowers right here from um, one of my swap partners and friend adele nailer she has a really great website i'm sorry i put like a little egg <laughs> underneath here to kind of hold it up while i was um hitting play sorry no sorry i got paint all over my hands too but um some of the colors that i used were um old rose and this is a prima um chalk distressor um i really like that one so i did that um along the little um hyacinth and um the rose and then um, I just use like a little um, lace doily, not lace, um, crochet doily, and then I use just a little um, flat back pearl and glue that on there. And then again, this has the old rose um, by Prima 2, and then this has walnut stain, and then I topped it off with old rose. Um, this is one of Saw Crafter's little chippies, and um, this is one of her wooden um, coffee cups. I just think these are so cute, or teacup, whatever, you know, either one, it, it'll work perfectly. Um, and then um, here is her sentiment, enjoy life, and um, I can't wait to um, put my special tea teas in here and display this in my house. It's super shabby chic, which I absolutely love. Um, again, the um, line that I used was Graphic 45's Botanical Tea Party. Um, so let me kind of do a little zoom in for you. I just loved it. Oh, and I forgot to mention this is also um, Saw Crafter's Chipboard Spoon. Isn't it cute? Or maybe I didn't mention that, but <laughs> anywho, it's getting late and I wanted to finish this project up. And so here we are. And I did leave the inside, well, except for the inside of these, because obviously, you know, if you turn it around, you're going to see this, you know, this side and this side, and of course the sides, but I left the bottom, um, you know, the blue color, and then on the inside, because of course this is going to be filled with um, my tea bags. So, um, let's see, and I forgot to, if I forgot to mention, um, I did use this Americana chalk finish for glass. Um, yes, I know this is wood, but two coats of this and it works just fine. So I just like the matte finish on here for some of the um, more antique items. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to set, uh, check out sawcrafters.com. Um, I think she still has some of this botanical tea party left. Um, I believe that uh, G45 um, is starting to, um, you, know, uh, you know, retire this line. So you might wanna grab some. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful and fabulous night. Bye, y'all.